Sri Mahayana Buddhist Temple located 800 meters north of Prambanan in central Java, Indonesia. The word for Hindu or Buddhist temple in Indonesian is Kandi, hence the common name is Kandi Sulu. Kandi Sulu is the second largest Buddhist temple complex in Indonesia, Borobudur is the largest. Sulu predates nearby the Rajon Garang Temple at Prambanan. Although the complex consists of 249 temples, this Javanese name translates to a thousand temples, which originated from popular local folklore, the legend of Loro Jongar Ang. Archaeologists believe the original name for the temple compound to be Manjusri Griha. History Construction According to the Kolarak inscription, dated from 782 CE, and the Manjusri Griha inscription, dated from 792 CE, which were discovered in 1960, the original name of the temple complex was probably Manjusri, the house of Manjusri. Manjusri is the Bodhisattva from Mahayana Buddhist teachings that symbolizes the general glory of transcendent wisdom, Sanskrit, Praj. Sulu Temple was built by the end of 8th century at the end of Rakai Penangran's reign and was completed during the reign of his successor, King Indra. Rakai Penangran, 746-780 CE, was well known as a devoted Mahayana Buddhist king who ruled the Madan Mataram Kingdom. The Manjus Rigra Temple was the largest Buddhist temple in the Prambanan Plain region, predating the nearby Prambanan Shives Temple by over 70 years and the Bodhapadur by about 37 years. Located in the heart of Matram, the temple served as the royal Buddhist temple of the kingdom. Stately religious ceremonies were held here regularly. The Manjus Rigra inscription, 792 praises the perfect beauty of the Prasada tower, of this temple compound. The Bubra temple, located several hundred meters south, and the Ghana temple, located east of the Sulu temple, probably served as guardian temples for the Manjus Rigraha complex, guarding the four cardinal directions around the Sulu temple. The ruins of the Lower Temple to the north of Sulu and the Kulan Temple on the western side are both in poor condition. Only a few stones remain on those sites. Prior to the construction of Borobudur and Prambanan, Sulu likely served as the kingdom's main temple. The temples are arranged in the Madala layout, which symbolizes the universe in Buddhist cosmology. Sulu Temple was probably expanded and completed during the rule of Rakai Bekatan, a prince who married a Buddhist princess from the Sale and Ra dynasty, Gramodorani. Most of his subjects retained their old religions after the court returned to favor Hinduism. The proximity of the Sulu Temple to Prambanan, a Hindu temple, suggests that the Hindu and Buddhist communities lived in harmony during the era in which the temples were built. And the scale of the temple complex suggests that Kandi Sulu was a royal Buddhist temple that served as an important religious site. The temple is located on the Prambanan Plain, between the southeastern slopes of the Merapi volcano and the Sulu mountain range in the south, near the present border of Yogi Akarta province and Kulten Regency in central Java. The plain has many archaeological sites scattered only a few miles apart, which suggests that this area served as an important religious, political, and urban center. Rediscovery A lithograph of Jandis Uwo ruins near Pramanen, circa 1859. Although buried deep beneath the volcanic debris around Mount Merapi, the temple ruins were not completely forgotten by the local Javanese inhabitants. However, the origins of the temple were a mystery. Over the centuries, tales and legends infused with myths of giants and a cursed princess were recounted by villagers. Krambanan and Sulu were purported to be of supernatural origin, and in the legend of Loro Jongarang they were said to have been created by a multitude of demons under the order of Bondan Bondo Waso. Such tales are most likely the reason the temples were preserved through the centuries prior to the Java War, 1825-1830. The local villagers dared not remove any of the temple stones, believing the ruins to be haunted by supernatural beings. In 1733, the Kawana II granted the Dutch merchant Cornelia 
Mobius and Tiddy Lon's permission to make a sightseeing tour through the heartland of Madurum. Lon's report of this trip contains the first known extant description of the Su'u and Prabodan temples. In the years 1806-07, the Dutch archaeologist Herman Cornelius, NL, unearthed the Su'u temples and created the first lithographs of Kandy Su'u's main temple and the Purwara temple. After Britain's short-lived rule of the Dutch East Indies, Thomas Stamford Raffles included Cornelius' image of Kandy Su'u in his 1817 book The History of Java. In 1825, the Belgian architect Auguste Pan created a series of Kandy Su'u images. During the Java War, 1825-1830, some of the temple stones were carted away and used in fortifications. In the years that followed the temple suffered from looting. Many of the Buddha statues were decapitated and the heads stolen. Some Dutch colonists stole sculptures and used them as garden ornaments, and native villagers used the foundation stones as construction material. Some of the temple's best preserved bari leaves, Buddha's head, and some ornaments were carried away from the site and ended up in museums and private collections abroad. Suu made temple before reconstruction. In 1867, Isidore van Kitzbergen photographed the ruins of Kandy Suu after an earthquake had caused the dome in main temple to collapse. In 1885, Jan Willemsen, revising some plans of the temple complex made earlier by Cornelius, made notes regarding the temple's condition. He noted that several Buddha heads were missing. By 1978 none of the Buddha heads had survived, all of them having been looted from the site completely. In 1901 a new set of photographs was taken, sponsored by Lay I.D. Melville. In 1908 Theodore Vanner, NL, initiated the clearing and reconstruction of the main temple, and in 1915 H. McLean Pondre reconstructed the Purwara temples with the Adel van Kinsbergen's photographs. Subsequently, the temple became a subject of study among archaeologists such as Willem Frederick Stutterham, id, and Nikolai Johannes Krohn, id, group, in 1923. In 1950 Johannes Gigesbertus de Caspris also studied the temple. Most of the archaeologists concurred that the temple was built in the first half of 9th century. However, in 1960 an inscription discovered in Purwara Temple No. 202 dated the year 792, meaning that the temple was constructed a few years earlier, in the late 8th century. Later in 1981, Jacques de Marsan conducted a thorough research of the temple. Contemporary Events Since the early 20th century the temple has been slowly and carefully reconstructed yet it has not been completely restored. There are hundreds of temple ruins, and many stones are missing. The main temple reconstruction and two of the Apit temples on the east side were completed in 1993 and inaugurated by President Soeharto on February 20, 1993. The temple was severely damaged during the 2006 Yogyakarta earthquake. The structural damage was significant and the central temple suffered the worst. Large pieces of debris were scattered about on the grounds, and cracks between stone blocks were detected. To prevent the central temple from collapsing, metal frame structures were erected on the four corners and attached to support the main temple. Although some weeks later in 2006 the site was reopened for visitors, the main temple remained closed for safety reasons. Today the metal frame has been removed, and visitors may visit and enter the main temple. The Su'u temple often hosts the annual desk ceremony. The temple complex. Aerial view of Su'u temple complex shows model of how Candy Su'u layout. The Su'u Temple Complex is the largest Buddhist compound in the Prambanan area, with rectangular grounds that measure 185 meters north-south and 165 meters east-west. There is an entrance on all four cardinal points, but the main entrance is located on the east side. Each of the entrances is guarded by twin Varapula statues. These large guardian statues have been better preserved, and replicas can be found at Jogjukrit. 
There are 249 buildings in the complex are arranged in a model pattern around the main central hall. This configuration expresses the Mahayana Buddhist view of the universe. There are 240 smaller temples, called Purwara, Guardian, temples, with similar designs that are arranged in four rectangular concentric rows. Two other rows are arranged closer and consist of 168 smaller temples, while two inner rows, arranged at certain intervals, consist of 72 temples. The 249 temples located in the second precinct were all made with a square frame but varied by different statues and orientations. Many of the statues are now gone, and the arrangements on the current site are not in the original orientations. The statues are comparable to the statues of Bora but are unlikely made of bronze. The images of Bodhisattva on wall of Purwara Temple. Along the north-south and east-west central axis at a distance of about 200 meters, between the second and third rows of the smaller temple are located the Apit, Plank, Temples, a couple on each terminal point facing each other. The Apit Temples are the second largest temples after the main temple, however only eastern twin Apit and a northern one still remain today. These smaller temples encompass a larger sanctuary that has been heavily looted. Behind the fourth row of smaller temples lies the stone paved courtyard where the main temple once stood on the center. The main temple. Kandisu main temple at left and one of Apa temple at right. This article may be confusing or unclear to readers. Please help us clarify the article. There might be a discussion about this on the top page. April 2010, learn how and when to remove this template message. The main temple measures 29 meters in diameter and soars up to 30 meters high. The ground plan of the main temple is a cross-shaped 20-sided polygon. On each of the four cardinal points of the main temple, there are four structures projected outward, each with its own stairs, entrances and rooms, ground widths to post, which form a cross-like layout. All of the structures are made from andesite stones. The main temple has five rooms, one large garbagria in the center and four smaller rooms in each cardinal direction. These four rooms are all connected with outer corner galleries with balustrades bordered by rows of small stupas. From the findings during the reconstruction process, it was suggested that the original design of Central Sanctuary only consisted of a central room temple surrounded by four additional structures with open portals. Doorways were added later. The portals were narrowed to create door frames on which to attach wooden doors. Some of the holes to attach doors are still visible. The doorways join the temples together into one main building with five rooms. The central chamber can be reached from the eastern room. The central chamber is larger than other rooms with the higher ceiling and a taller roof. Now all the five rooms are empty. However the lotus carved stone pedestal in the central chamber suggests that the temple once contained a large bronze Buddhist statue, possible the bronze statue of Manjusri, probably reaching a height of 4 meters. The statue is missing, probably looted for scrap metal over the centuries. However another theory suggested that the main statue was probably constructed from several stone blocks coated with vajralipa plaster. Indonesia, is the world's biggest Buddhist temple complex. They may not realize that the second largest one, Kandisu, is also within spitting distance of the city's airport. Best of all, it's a mere 15 minute stroll from Prambanan, you can visit both on the same admission ticket. Even though Prambanan is a Hindu site, Su'u has stood alongside it for hundreds of years. Rival worshippers didn't trip each other's sanctuaries apart, 
thankfully. Instead, earthquakes and souvenir hunters were what reduced both sides to rubble, before UNESCO elevated Prambanan into the status of a World Heritage Site. Despite its proximity to such a storied Indonesian attraction, Suwa sees far fewer visitors. It's not terribly pretty to look at from most angles, and there aren't many ballet performances in front of it, but it's no less significant in the local culture than its famous neighbor, Candy Suwa. Local legend links Suwa with Prambanan and the nearby volcanic crater lake. It also explains how Candy Suwa which translates as a thousand temples in Japanese, got its name even though the site features only 249 shrines. While the lore ignores the fact that Tsu predates both Borobudur and Prambanan by a few decades, who doesn't love a good story? There were once two neighboring empires in Java. Bondo Bondo Waso, a prince from Penging, was smitten with Laura Jangar Aang, a princess of the Boko Empire. After conquering Boko, the prince asked for Lara John Garang's hand in marriage. There was a problem, though, he had killed her father in battle. She thus set the insistent prince two conditions, build a well, the crater lake summer Jalatunda, and 1000 temples in one night. Prince Bondan finished the well easily using his supernatural abilities. Goodness knows why he had more difficulty escaping the well after Lara John Garang buried him alive in it. Any other man would have been deterred from marrying her at this point, but the prince proceeded to start work on the temples. He summoned an army of demons, which swiftly finished 999 of them. As they worked on the last temple, the princess's handmaids lit a fire in the east and started their morning ritual of pounding rice. This caused the roosters to crow, tricking the demons into fleeing before they completed their work. In fury, our love-struck prince cursed the princess, turning her into stone. She was placed inside the last temple, the Shiva Tower at Prambanan, where visitors continue to admire her today as the sculpture of Turgislang the Bull Demon. Visiting the site. Now that I've exhausted the information that you can find on Wikipedia, here's what it's like to visit Suu. Typically, one would walk to Suu from the south after exploring Brambanan, and returning the sarong that the groundskeepers make foreigners wear. The path takes people past two other Buddhist ruins, Kandi Bubra and Lambang. It then follows the western side of the fence that surrounds the Suu compound. The site looks a right mess after what earthquakes a 19th century village builders have done to it. They didn't dare to approach the place before the European colonialists broke the taboo. The cavitated Buddha sculptures sit exposed to the elements while their heads decorate manners around the world. It took decades to us toward the main shrine that towers over the rubble. If it wasn't a sin to do so, I would have summoned Prince Spondong's demons to help out. Candy Suu. However, many of the structures have been rebuilt on the eastern side. A gap in the gate lets visitors walk through the ancient courtyard, passing one layer of shrines after another. It's like Bora Bater, but without the steep steps or the reliefs. Bell-shaped stupas of various sizes top each tower. The lack of bar reliefs at the site means that one won't be spending hours reading into miles of friezes. The main sanctuary at the center of the complex consists of four rooms surrounding the central hall at each cardinal point. Every room probably once contained a sculpture of a bodhisattva, enlightened beings who delay nirvana to help other people, all of them are now empty. I was glad for that, however, there were a few wasps hovering around the entrances. I'm not going to pretend that missing out on Suu will break your visit to Yogi Okarta, it won't. However, since it costs nothing extra to see it, other than a few calories from the wall, it's worth the look, especially as it's aesthetically different from Brambanan and Bora Butter, and less crowded to boot. While you're at it, see the other ancient Buddhist shrines around Bora Butter, Mandat and Pawan. Getting there. Boss Barney gets you to Prambanan from the Adishu Sapto airport in about 20 minutes, 3000 rupiah. 
from the bus stop, follow the main road is to get to the entrance. Admission costs 220,000 rupiah for foreigners. If you just arrived or are about to catch a flight, you can leave your luggage at the bag drop. After exploring the Prambanan complex, go to the exit on the north side and follow the signs to Zoom. Give yourself three hours to explore both sites. Thank you.